Good day, everyone. Welcome to this learning session from Training Location. We are an authorized disk distributor for Wiley Publishing, as well as a channel partner with the Ken Blanchard Companies. My name is Bill Harshman, and I'll be your presenter today for this short, informative video. In today's disk lesson, we will discuss responding to the eye or influence style. We're shifting from understanding the eye style to more of interacting and responding. I'll address today's topic from multiple perspectives. One, those who are not familiar with the DISC technology or jargon. Two, those who are familiar and have some understanding of each of the four styles. And three, those who not only know DISC, but have taken the assessment and know their own style and other styles as well. I'll review eye-specific or influence-specific information, then provide examples of responses to daily situations. I've always encouraged learners to maintain a couple important pieces of baseline knowledge. These pieces are crucial and critical to understanding DISC. First are the cornerstone principles that we've discussed before. All DISC styles are equally valuable. Everyone is a unique blend of all DISC styles, and people tend toward one or in some cases, two styles. And your unique style is also influenced by other factors such as life experiences, education, and maturity. The second is the basic DISC model that you see here. It is also critical and crucial to understanding the model and the styles. A person's DISC style is decided by the intersection of two dimensions of observable behaviors, including body language, tone of voice and expression and word choice. Now the vertical dimension is known as pace or outward activity level, described as either fast paced and outspoken or cautious and reflective. The horizontal dimension is known as what I call your agreeableness quotient. Now this means that those who are less agreeable and who place a lower priority or concern for cooperation and social harmony, we refer to them as questioning and skeptical on the left end of this dimension. A general term for them might be result-focused. Those who are more agreeable place a higher priority on cooperation and social harmony, and we refer to them as accepting and warm on the right end of this dimension. A general term for them might be people-focused. It is the interaction between these two continua of pace and agreeableness which forms the four quadrants, or basic styles, of the DISC model and by which you identify a person's DISC style. However, if you don't know about DISC, let alone the style of the person you're responding to, this is the power of DISC. It begins with observable behavior. I said this lesson would be helpful to the non-DISC types. Let's see how. Here's a scenario. Someone comes up to you quickly, enthusiastically, and solicits your support for what is, quote unquote, sure to be a fun project with some data the company needs for a final report within the hour. Then they begin telling you about the last project and the friendly relationships that resulted from the work. Now, if your only observations about this person are that they seem fast paced, people focused, expressive, and enthusiastic, you already have a lot of information, not even mentioning DISC, about this individual. Let me ask here, intuitively, are you going to respond to them in a short, curt, unemotional manner? I doubt it. I don't think so. Even in this interaction, one can wisely assume that the other person is not looking to disengage or reject conversation or collaboration. If your goal is to have effective communication, you will be better off to let's say, align and reflect with their observable behaviors than to ignore those behaviors. This helps clarify, focus, and validate that. Now, as we continue to look at responding to an I, let's start with a definition of influence with which we're likely familiar, and it'll help calibrate the reader and provide a common baseline of understanding as we proceed. Excuse me. Oxford defines influence as the capacity to have an effect on the character, development, or behavior of someone or something or the effect itself. 
DISC will provide much more interpretation and meaning to this style label that we call influence. And understanding more about the relationship with the other styles will help our response lesson. Now, with the focus in the I style, let's break down the pace and agreeableness model that we looked at earlier. Let's start with pace. We see that the I and the D share a faster outspoken pace. Still focusing on the I style, let's look at the agreeableness quotient. We see that I and S share an accepting and warm agreeableness, AKA people focused. Now you might wonder, well, what about the diagonal pairings? For example, the I and C relationship. Very good question. This is where we begin to see interaction between dissimilar styles that share neither pace nor agreeableness. Let's take a look. Again, with our focus on the I style, we know that an I comes from a faster and outspoken pace combined with an accepting and warm agreeableness. Again, people focused. When the I needs to interact with the C, the first thing the I considers is that the C has a cautious and reflective pace combined with a questioning and skeptical agreeableness or result focused. Now, this knowledge alone is all the I needs to prepare for successful interaction. Granted, it will take a little more planning and effort entering into that conversation with the other person's C style. I call this the stretch. Only one style will have to stretch or flex a little to speak the language of another style, and you're always considering the other's needs and preferences and priorities. Now let's look at a very brief list of descriptors to help you more easily and accurately respond to the I or influence style. Let's review the basic style. We already know the two continua of observable behavior, which indicate an I style, and that is pace and agreeableness. Let's look at more descriptors to help us understand better. Outgoing, enthusiastic, optimistic, high-spirited, and lively. Here's a reminder from an actual DISC profile report for an I style. Eyes place a high priority on enthusiasm and tend to maintain an upbeat attitude. Eyes prioritize action and tend to focus on making quick progress toward exciting solutions. And eyes value collaboration and usually enjoy meeting new people and involving everyone toward building team spirit. Let's look at how eyes see all the other four styles, including other eyes. And I've listed the respective motivators of those styles as we go forward here. An eye sees Ds as driven, competitive, forceful, strong-willed. An eye sees other eyes as talkative, optimistic, maybe a little naive, and certainly passionate. An eye sees Ss, or steady styles, as soft-spoken, indecisive, unassertive and trusting and last an i sees c's as analytical private precise and methodical now again this is from the i perspective how they see each of the other four styles so i don't want to leave you with the thought that it's only about how we respond to an i the influence style has perceptions and beliefs and knowledge with which they approach the world too if our subject I observes your behavior and begins to understand more about you, this can help tremendously with your interactions. For example, if our I observes someone as cautious and reflective, combined with accepting and warm or people focused, they might deduce that that person is likely an S style. However, if the S knows about themselves, and also knows how an I likes to be approached, the likelihood that with a little stretch the S will be able to respond to the I more effectively. Now, in all fairness, the best interaction occurs when each style reaches in toward the other style with acceptance, understanding, and a desire for mutual communication success. Let me take you through a simple everyday exchange. An employee walks up to an I style coworker and asks the coworker, would they like to go to lunch? The I coworker responds, I hope you're not joking. I would love to get out for lunch. Those donuts this morning wore off so quickly. Where should we go? I've got a craving for Thai food. No, wait, I think I've got a craving for anything. What are you thinking? Hey, what you working on over there? Oh, well, listen, I'll head to the restroom, then we can get going. Oh, and let's go by Julie's desk and see if she wants to join us. Oh, and can we take my new car? I've really been wanting to show you. Now, your response to the I and I'm just going to give a little hint here. Be prepared with your response before you ask them to lunch. But seriously, acknowledge their ideas, 
infuse your parameters gently into the conversation, such as the time required to drive to their favorite restaurants, and agree on a couple of restaurant choices that work with your food preferences and your parameters. Ask their opinion of your suggestions. Eyes like to be involved, are spontaneous, and want to build alliances. They don't necessarily seek to be in control. So don't let the simplicity of this scenario fool you. The same awareness applies to other types of communication, such as phone or face-to-face or text or email. So let's take a look at those two. How do you respond to an eye handshake? Now, an eye handshake might be animated with some body movement, more eye contact than most people. They're seeking engagement, and they're always so pleased to meet someone new. So your response to that eye handshake, mirror the expressiveness and enthusiasm, Acknowledge the introduction, such as, I'm very pleased to meet the backbone of our IT department. Our salespeople enjoy working with you. How do you respond to an I voicemail? The eyes typically leave a friendly, enthusiastic, a little animated, perhaps a very short sentence about their day even, and finally a possible, hey, I need to chat briefly, closing message. Conversely, they'll li- likely listen to a long voicemail message before calling you back. So excited that you called and are they're already thinking of what they're going to talk to you about. Response to the I voicemail: Simple. Acknowledge their message cheerfully, ask their opinion, and suggest some parameters about getting together for a discussion. Now, responding to the I or influence email. Follow along as I read this short email from an I. Hi, everyone. Valentine's Day Company Lunch Planning Committee. I'm so excited that we'll be working on this project together. I've scheduled our first meeting for Tuesday 27th at 9. Plenty of coffee and morning treats. We're on the second floor with a fantastic view to open our minds to possibilities. This is going to be fun, and I'm sure the event will be a huge success. Bring your ideas, your enthusiasm, and your fun. Remember the Holiday Planning Committee? That was a blast. Let's have that fun again. You're awesome. See you soon. Hattie Project. Now, eyes may write lengthy emails, peppered with jokes, emoticons, and more. It's very important to eyes that their tone be accurately conveyed, but it may take some reading by others for the actual point to be made. Your response? Echo the enthusiasm and let them know of your support and willingness to participate, such as, thanks, Patty. I'm really looking forward to working with you on this project. Thank you for getting us all together, and especially for having coffee and treats for the gang. Now, just to note here, my response is really focused on the recognition motivation of the I. Let me volunteer one more thing. Yes, you might be an I writing this email. However, always consider the audience. If you're looking at an audience of all types, you may well want to have a more inclusive writing style appealing to all four disc types. This is especially helpful if you're coaching another manager or if you're one of your direct reports who is great at writing emails from an I perspective, like Patty, yet you receive feedback that your employees' emails are uh, a little lofty and time-consuming and even seem a little disorganized and chatty, etc. For example, what if this email were addressing an urgent evacuation of the building in one hour? Let's keep it simple. Here's the final review of our model featuring the I style as a reminder of the behaviors we need to consider when responding. So I hope this has been helpful and increased your awareness, knowledge, and familiarity of the disc, and specifically the influence style. Whether your needs include onboarding, employee engagement, team building, culture change, conflict management, or just simply communication, DISC is a research-based, proven, leading training solution. It's impacted more than 8 million learners in over 130,000 organizations and through 14 languages in over 70 countries worldwide. DISC provides a quick, intuitive way to understand yourself and others, and DISC delivers immediate and lasting impact on the performance of people and the culture of organizations. And as always, my mantra, keep the key to effectiveness through DISC is understanding your and other styles, then using that knowledge for improved interactions. Here's our contact info. And please, before you go, I want to extend you a resource and request. I'll be happy to send you a sample PDF of any of the profiles you see on our website. Or if you'd like to discuss a complimentary live webinar introducing DISC or a particular profile to your team or organization, shoot me an email at info at traininglocation.com. And be sure and check out our blog at the website, traininglocation.com. And before you go, we always appreciate your like or your share 
your download. And of course, for continued learning, please subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content. Thanks for joining us and goodbye till next time.